Hey everyone, it's Keith here. I'm a few months behind on this recent mail and pickup series, so for today's video, I picked out some gear that I found interesting and worth sharing with you all. First up, we have some gear from my friends at Wesson. I've been working with them for the past couple of years, and they recently sent me the final pieces for me to complete my Wesson collection. The team at Wesson sent over a Wolfpack work rag and a super cool Wesson t-shirt. I planned on wearing this t-shirt for this video, but it's still very cold here in Australia. They also sent over the Sambler, which is a slim friction folder with titanium handles. Compared to my other knives, this knife is incredibly slim. It also feels very lightweight and it comes in at around 39 grams. The Samla has an extended tang and it can be opened with one hand. Once it's opened, the tang has aggressive jimping for the thumb to rest on and it feels very grippy. Since this friction folder is so thin, there's not too much handle to grab onto. This knife is probably best for light EDC tasks. There's no pocket clip on this knife, however, there's an optional sheath you can get for it. The leather sheath makes the overall setup quite stylish while preventing the blade from accidentally opening up. The next item they sent me is the titanium multi-tool called the MT. This multi-tool is very lightweight and it has a similar design to the carabiner. On the MT, there's a scraper, pry bar, bowl opener, and a small screwdriver. Since it's so thin and lightweight, I usually leave this in my camera bag to screw on tripod plates and other camera accessories. The last piece of gear they sent me is the QR, and it's a quick release keychain. The QR is also made from titanium, and it's perfect for those who don't like magnets. I've always wanted to check out the QR, and I'm so happy that I finally got to. I've been trying to find the perfect key solution for a really long time, and this QR might be the final piece to my setup. My current key setup works pretty well for me, except for my car keys. I usually carry my car keys on a separate carabiner for quick access. With the Wesson Quick Release, I can attach my car keys to the Alpaca Hub to streamline my key setup and minimize its footprint. Next up, we have a knife from an upcoming Chinese knife manufacturer called Trevisa. The knife I have here is the Lynx in the black stonewashed blade and black micarta scales. I've had this knife for a few months now and it's surprisingly good. The Lynx has a worn cliff blade shape with a very thin and pointy tip. The blade steel on this is 1428CN and it has a very slicey edge. The micarta scales are beautiful and feel very grippy. The Lynx is a full size knife and for my small hands, the ergos can sometimes feel a bit awkward. I think this handle would feel very comfortable if you have medium or large size hands. The deployment and closing action feels very soft on this knife. It runs on ceramic ball bearings, but it doesn't feel very snappy. When the blade is closed, it's very quiet and has a distinctive sound. One thing I don't like about this knife is the pointy tip on the liner lock. When I engage the lock, I can sometimes feel the tip poke into my thumb. Another small thing I'm not a fan of is the Trevisa logo on the pocket clip. I think the knife looks better and sleeker without the logo. For 50 US dollars, I think the Lynx is a great value knife. If you like the design, I recommend checking it out. Next up, we have two wallets from Dango Products. They sent me the D01 R-Spec wallet and the M1 Maverick wallet. The D01 R-Spec wallet is inspired by the automotive industry and it uses premium materials like carbon fiber, machined aluminium and leather. It has three slots and it can hold up to 12 cards with RFID protection. There's a silicone band wrapped around the wallet that can hold loose notes and receipts. The D01 wallet is a pretty slim card holder and the materials make it look sophisticated. I kind of wished both sides of the wallet had carbon fiber instead of a mix of leather on one side and carbon fiber on the other. The other wallet they sent me is the M1 Maverick wallet, which is a tactical bifold wallet. The Maverick has an aluminium case with a leather bifold exterior. On the exterior, it has two card slots on the front and one on the back. On the interior, there's also another card slot beneath the leather cover. The aluminium case holds up to six cards and also has a silicone band for notes. The main feature of this wallet is the included multi-tool hidden beneath the aluminium plate. This multi-tool has tools such as a seatbelt cutter, prior, a serrated edge, and a few hex wrenches. I recommend checking out the product page for the full list of tools. The multi-tool sits in the case with a few grooves that secure it in place and prevents it from sliding out accidentally. The M1 Maverick wallet can hold up to 16 cards without the multi-tool and 14 cards with the multi-tool. This is a very rugged wallet and can certainly handle a few bumps and scratches during day-to-day -day use. 
I've been testing these two wallets for the past few months and I'm not a fan of them. I don't carry many cards and the M1 Maverick is quite thick and takes up a lot of pocket space. On the other hand, I don't carry any cash or notes and the silicone band on the D01 isn't very useful in my case. Out of all the Dango wallets I've tested, I still prefer the A10 Adapt Wallet. I love the design and how the cards are stored. If you want to learn more about the Adapt Wallet, you can check out my previous recent mail video. The next item I received in the mail is the Rogue Mini from Rive Knives. Here we have the Sequoia and Sand G10 versions. The Sand version is my favourite and I like the simple blocky design of this knife. Its blade shape makes this knife excellent for utility cuts. The Rogue Mini has a solid backspacer and full liners on the inside of the scales. It has a surprising hefty weight for its small size. This is a cool looking knife but there's one thing I don't like. The location and numbering seem a bit unnecessary and I would have preferred if it said what blade steel it is instead. I don't mind the logo on the blade because I like how it's implemented with the cutout on the handle. Overall, the Rogue Mini is a unique looking knife and if you're after a box cutter or utility knife, this is a good option to consider. Next up, the team at PowerTac sent over the M5 G2 flashlight for me to check out. This tactical flashlight runs on an 18650 battery and can be charged through its magnetic charging port. It can run for 6.5 hours at its maximum output of 2030 lumens, which is pretty crazy. At its dimmest firefly mode, it can output 0.51 lumens for 25 days. The M5 G2 has a very narrow beam pattern and can reach up to 330 meters. I've been playing around with this flashlight and I'm really impressed with its build quality and battery life. The flashlight has great knurling around the body and it even has a flat base which is very useful when you need to place a light flat on a table to light up a small room. There's one strange thing I notice about this light. The logos on the body aren't aligned with the buttons or the charging port. I'm not sure if it's a design decision or a feature, but I've also noticed other M5 G2 flashlights have the same layout. If you don't mind the strange alignment of the logo and button, I think the M5 G2 is a great flashlight for 70 US dollars. The specs on this light are a bit of an overkill for everyday use, but the ability to output 2000 lumens for 6.5 hours is very impressive. Moving on to the gear I bought, in the previous episode of the series, I talked about the carbon fiber weep here. And shortly after filming that video, I managed to find a seller selling the brass version. This version of the pier was my grail knife and I'm really happy that I picked it up. The brass pier has a completely different feeling compared to the carbon fiber version. The brass feels a lot heavier and the action is much stiffer, but it has a much more satisfying feeling when it's deployed. I originally didn't plan on getting the carbon fiber, but now I have two wee peers. The two different versions remind me of a light side and a dark side lightsaber. I'm planning on swapping the inlays in the future, but for now, I'm really enjoying these two knives in the original configuration. The Wii P is the only EDC gear I bought in the past few months, and that wraps up this mail call video. As always, product links and affiliate links are in the description. If you end up getting any of the products I've talked about, let me know in the comments below. I recently started a newsletter and it's free to sign up. In this newsletter, I'm going to share things happening in the EDC world as well as any websites, blog posts or videos that I find interesting. You can sign up to the newsletter in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.